Good evening. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's a glorious time of worship and praise. Man, do I love worshiping you, Lord, on these Wednesday nights. I'm not sure if it's the uh, beautiful Christmas lights that are enhancing the mood, but Lord, I want to thank you for Wednesdays especially. A lot of times I'm thinking, oh, Wednesday, you know. I just want to get to my sofa. I want to get to my clicker. I want to get to the um, solitude, perhaps, of my social media, whatever it might be. Lord, I want to thank you that you know that about us and you know that about me. I pray, Father, that tonight, Lord, by your grace, maybe we'll have something that might be helpful for this upcoming year. I pray by your grace, Lord. You be the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're the real teacher. Please be with us tonight. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. What's he going to talk about now? Um, I had sort of thought about a couple of uh, end times Bible prophecy updates. And then the thought occurred to me, <laughs> you guys know most of it. You really do. What was it, uh, 20 years ago? For some of us, maybe longer, man, we would, we would just eat this stuff up with a spoon. Did you know that one day soon there will be a checklist, cashless society? You'll be able to have some sort of a device that automatically debits your account and credits the account of the store you're buying from. Oh my, like home alone, we grabbed our cheeks. We talked about, did you know about the... Uh, the um, nations aligning themselves according to Ezekiel 38 and 39. Wow. <laughs> Did you know that somehow the entire globalist movement would reach such a kind of a consummate place that you would probably be somewhere that you could get a passport, maybe, maybe not by, by the edict of somebody else. In fact, if you don't get this COVID vaccine soon... You can't get a passport, maybe. You can't get on a bus, perhaps. You can't go into a restaurant. I wonder if that day's coming. All that said, I thought to myself, we've covered a lot over the years. Many of you are excellent students. So what I wanted to do tonight is say, you know what? I'm going to back up from that a little bit. And how many of you are quite satisfied that 2020 is almost completely in the rearview mirror? My, oh my, what a challenging time this has been. What do you think 2021 is going to be like? Answer? <laughs> I don't know. But I want to give you something tonight. We, uh, we're going to take a little break out of Jeremiah, and um, this touched my heart. I hope it will speak to you as well. Are you in 2 Corinthians? Look down there to verse number, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Look down there to verse 11. Oh, Corinthians, boy, there's a story right there. If you remember from our study, the Corinthian, the city of Corinth was in a major east-west and north-south sort of crossroads there in the Aegean Sea. The rich trade routes ran practically right through a seafaring city, all manner of sin and gluttony and, well, basically everything you can catch on cable television is right there. And I was thinking, you know, Paul had something good to say for them, and so for 2021, I hope to hope to basically remind myself and us all: no matter what's coming down the road, remember this. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse eleven: O Corinthians, O harvest, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections, meaning. We've proved that we didn't hold back anything from you. Remember that? Yet you guys are holding back your love from us. Why? Because you're not really trusting our teaching. If you remember, there are other way more flashier um, teachers that were swinging through the whole area. Paul, uh, by some estimations and some, if you were to go to some, um, some descriptions, there are some descriptions of the Apostle Paul that have survived and they describe him as a short fella, balding profusely with a large hook nose. He wasn't really great to look at, it might seem. And there was Apollos, and there was all these other quite gifted orators. 
They're asking a little something, something on the side, but the church there at Corinth was enamored by these powerfully gifted orators, dripping with talent. Paul was saying, well, yeah, I get it. But then he would say, you know, you have many teachers, but you don't have many fathers. I'm kind of like your father. I'm not going to butter you up. I'm going to tell you the truth. Verse 13, now in return for the same I speak as to children, really my children, I've prayed for you, hurt for you, sacrificed for you so often. It's because I think of you not as students, not as a paycheck, but as my own kids. Verse 14, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Oh, good. This is about that marriage thing. This is about, hey, you teenagers, don't date someone who's not a Christian. Well, of course, that's a part of it. But for 2021, Harvest, don't let us become attached to the world, the non-believers or their stuff or their Instagrams or their videos, or their Facebook pages. Allow nothing that interests, allow nothing to interest me, bind me, obligate me to them or their culture. Um, I was, I was uh, remarking, I've had a couple wonderful days <coughs> to kind of just chill, and I watched a lot of movies. Nicole and I, we love movies. We've loved movies ever since, well, we sort of bonded over movies at the employee dining room at the Silver Legacy. You saw that movie too? I did too, did you like that? I was impressed by her uh, apprehension of the fine nuances of, of culture and cinema. We bonded over that. We were this close to um, diving headlong into that industry. We had been invited to, uh, to move to uh, Canada actually and uh, dive into that business. We love movies. There in our early dating times, we had a lot of fun in a lot of ways, but one of our funnest times of the year was the spring. Lock the doors, take the phone off the hook. That was before you had a phone in your pocket or your hand. We would uh, pop a, a, a hot tub sized container of popcorn. And we loved watching the Academy Awards. And I found myself, with a couple of my times off looking for, for movies, and then it occurs to me today reading this, boy, I tell you what, I, I am not even, I hardly twitch at all by some of the stuff that's considered PG-13. Um, you remember the old adage, everybody does, if you want to boil a frog, you know, don't put him right in your boiling cauldron of water, they'll hop right out. They're too smart for that. What you do is you kind of warm it up to nice and cozy that frogs like and let him splash around. And then when he's not looking, you kind of turn up ooh, doo -doo, one degree at a time. And the theory goes, he becomes so accustomed to it that uh, pretty soon you have boiled frog. Not that anybody would want boiled frog. I don't know. Frog's legs, maybe that's another subject. But I was wondering, am I, am I a bit of a boiled frog? I don't know what's coming up in 2021. But I wonder how much of the church, myself included, is just so desensitized to the garbage coming over all of the social media. I praise God I'm not smart enough for Facebook. <laughs> um, I praise God I'm not um, articulate enough online or on my phone for Instagram or tweeting and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've been asked, you know, how about this, how about that? I just don't know. And I find that I'm losing touch with some people that, because that's kind of the, the new medium of exchange. But you know what else pours over those sites? Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Don't become attached to them or their stuff. Of course, don't date and don't marry or don't have business partnerships or workout partners with non-believers, but what about social media? What about talk radio, CNN, Fox News, Instagram and all? We want to stay informed, don't we? Don't we? And the answer is yes, but with this important boundary. Don't be yoked to it. 
Jesus would say in Matthew 11, verse 30, take my yoke. My yoke is easy. That word for easy is the Greek word krostos, means good fit. And Jesus knew a thing or two about good fitting yokes. Why? Remember, he's a carpenter. And he's a carpenter's son. And that word for carpenter in the New Testament is tekton. It's where we're going to get our word technician. Highly trained, an expert. It's a good thing. Jesus and his father were highly skilled Finnish craftsmen. Crucial for making yokes that would not injure the animal. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Because my yoke is easy and my burden is I don't know about you, but I'm trying to tune out 6 p.m. with David Muir. I mean, I'm drawn back again and again. I, and there's a number of things. How many of you are talk, junk, talk, show, talk radio junkies? Don't raise your hand. How many of you find that after a good long period of input from those kinds of sources, you start to get kind of agitated? I found that to be true with me. Jesus says, don't, don't put on that yoke. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Number one, my yoke is a perfect fit. Perfect. Whatever I allow to touch your life, you'll be ready for. Number two, if you put my yoke on, I do most of the pulling. Remember how a yoke works. Most yokes were dual collared yokes. And you would take the the heifer or the cow that was kind of trained by an older cow, and then when the older cow sort of passes on or, or is not able to do it anymore, you bring in the new heifer, and you put the new heifer next to the old heifer. And at first, the new heifer's all, I don't like this yoke whatsoever. And you could almost, if cows could talk, easy there, youngin. I know my way around this field. Relax. Take my yoke upon you. I'm going to take you around this place. All of that by take my yoke upon you. For what fellowship has righteousness? Righteousness is a fancy church word. Can we insert something I think perhaps a bit more, a bit more descriptive? Obedience. For what fellowship is someone walking in obedience to the word with someone who isn't lawlessness? And what communion has light, if you will, truth, understanding, and grasp with darkness, an idea of delusion? Let me, re let me rephrase. What fellowship does obedience have with people who are disobedient whether they're Christians or not. And what communion has truth with delusion? Verse 15, and what accord has Christ, the true God, with Belial? Remember who Jesus is. He walked on water. He healed the sick, cast out demons. Why hang out with him and versus Belial, who was all about idols? Sexual saturation but no substance. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? What's the, what's the overarching answer to all this rhetorical question? None. Then why do we invite them in so often through our media? I don't know what's going to happen in 2021, but I think if anybody needs to have an answer, it's us. Because I think it's going to come apart more and more out there. I really do. I don't know how this vaccine is going to work. I really don't. But I don't have to tell you all of the conspiracy theories that are mounting uh, with gaining momentum. And I don't have to tell you the hot button that masks are. I was in the uh, ER today. A brother was going to have surgery and Nurse was, was working so beautifully, so efficiently around the many, the many tubes and wires and such. And I said, so did you get the vaccine? And she said, yeah, I did. I said, well, that's good. I said, is everyone getting it? And she kind of sighed. She said, not everyone. Now, I'm not saying get the vaccine. I'm not saying don't get the vaccine. 
What I'm saying is there are people with strong opinions that are based on perhaps all the stuff that they've run down, who knows what websites. Are we to be informed? I believe we are. How long do I stay in the rabbit hole that can be YouTube finding out about this or that? Is it just me? Um, have you noticed that a large portion of, oh, I better not name the, the, the uh, generation by, by name specifically. Are you aware that there is a considerable amount of young people who believe that the world is flat? You mean the flat earthers? Mm -hmm. um, now, before you say, what? I'm just telling you. There are some celebrities that I could mention that you might, one NBA player I'm thinking of right now, who believes that there is a flat earth and that the round earth is a bit of a conspiracy. Nicole showed me an article, heartbreaking article not long ago about people who are hired by Facebook and what they do is they vet or they watch the the um, limitless videos that people are posting because you don't want to put, click on something and see something awful. Well, it's way beyond Facebook. So they've hired out, what is it, 12, 14 uh, centers around the earth. And they don't work for Facebook necessarily, but these, these, these uh, places, they hire them for not a whole lot of money. And Nicole took me through the painful process of, of how they vet or how they, some can make it, most cannot. Day number one of training. And Nicole described the video that this person had to watch. What's fascinating is they're, as you might imagine, they are drowning in PTSD, these people who watch these videos. In fact, there was a suit not long ago brought against Facebook because they want to be remuner remunerated, compensated because of their PSD, PTSD. Here's what's another interesting thing. Because they watch so much stuff, they are beginning to formulate their sense of reality. And the flat earth conspiracy is a big one. They're beginning to believe that the Twin Towers did not happen the way that we all have been sold a bill of goods. And off and off and off they go. Conspiracy theories are, becoming, are beginning to permeate their thinking. Doesn't the Bible say, be careful what you place before your eyes? Hold your finger here real quickly. Many of you know this one. It's Philippians. Go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Ephesians, Galatians. Come on, Steve. You can find it, buddy. There you go. Um, you want to play some elevator music while Pastor Steve finds us? Oh, here we are. All right, here we are. Chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. What does that mean, always? Well, even, even during some of our stuff, yep. And in case you missed it the first time, again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. When you do that on a consistent basis, look. And then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, verse 8. Finally, harvest. Whatever things are true, you might want to highlight that. Whatever things are noble, perhaps highlight that. Whatever things are just, highlight, perhaps underline that. Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, report. If there's any virtue, is anything praiseworthy, meditate, put these things consistently before your eyes. This is virtually impossible if you spend almost any amount of time online. Is it just me? 
Steve, you told me to put a soldering iron in my modem. Well, no. I'm just saying, know that this verse is here. Because people, and I myself have been included in this, when you go down the rabbit hole of this research project or that research project, when I pull the dipstick out of my heart, if I'm experiencing anxiety and fear and concern and conspiracy theories abounding, it might be time to turn off the screen for a while. Is everybody okay? Back to, uh, back to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, we're in chapter 6, now we're down there to verse number 16. And what agreement has the temple of God, God's house, with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. Who's the temple? Raise your hand. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you are. Where are you taking your temple? What agreement has the temple of God, God's house, with idols? You are the temple of the living God. As God has said, and he's going to cite Ezekiel 27, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, this is Isaiah 52, verse 11. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Come out from among whom? All of the world's stuff and their people and their websites potentially. Have you found yourself becoming anxious? What's going to happen in 2021? I get it. It's a real and reasonable human emotion. But am I sort of unsettled because I have forgotten this verse? Come out from among them. Be not unequally yoked to them. Especially now, social media Talk radio, tweet, Instagram, hours of video conspiracies. Is it just me? Have any of you ever done that? You look up and it's 2.30 in the morning and you're like, I really think there was somebody on the grassy knoll, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Versus the fruit of the Spirit. You remember Galatians 5? What's the fruit of the Spirit? Anxiety, suspicion, and conspiracy. What's the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace. peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, meekness. What is meekness? Meekness isn't weakness. Meekness is I have an ability to really do whatever I want. And that's true. But meekness says I choose to submit to, come under the covering of God's word. Do I have an ability to pick up a rock and throw it through your car windshield? I do. Why shouldn't I do that? <laughs> For a number of reasons. That's meekness. Do I want to disown the Raiders after their flaming defeat on Friday? <laughs> I mean, a team can lose. I get that. Anyway, don't take me there. Talk about come out from among them. <laughs> Nicole prayed for me in tongues out loud, I believe. Anyway, when I find that my peace is not there, when I'm kind of in trepidation looking, antidote, or what is it, uh, vaccine, no vaccine, uh, the election, what's going to happen? Uh, Biden, is he going to make it past the first 100 days? Are we going to have Kamala Harris as president? Uh, mass, no mass, uh, T-Rex. Maybe I've forgotten. Hey, Steve. Take a break. Come out from among them. Whatsoever things are pure, noble, praiseworthy, all nine of those. Put that in front of your eyes. Just a reminder. Verse 18, he's now going to cite Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. Hey, Harvest, if God is your dad, is he going to let you squirm and squiggle and ultimately be eternally destroyed? No. Who's your father? Who's your dad? I will be a father to you. You should be my sons and daughters, 
says the Lord, say the last part with me, how mighty? Almighty. Um, do we want to turn there? Yeah, go ahead and turn there. Go to uh, 2 Timothy 3. You guys know this by heart. Hold your, keep your finger in 2 Corinthians 6. Flip over to, uh, to 2 Timothy 3. Look down at verse 16. 1 Timothy, pardon me, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. Now, most scripture is given by inspiration of God. What does yours say? All. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine that's teaching me what is right. For reproof that's correcting in my brain what is wrong. For correction. This is how and get the tools to change destructive belief systems. Let me say that to you one more time. The tools to change destructive belief systems. For instruction in righteousness, equipping a new life with tools that work. All scripture has been given by the inspiration of God. Be careful what translation you're reading in the Bible. Make sure it's a translation, not a paraphrase. That's okay, even if you, if you have a computer, you can find out what the Hebrew and the Greek says. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine. Show me what's right. For reproof, correct what's wrong. For correction, change my destructive belief system. For instruction in righteousness, equipping me with the tools for my new life to work. That the man of God may be completed, thoroughly equipped for every good work. We, uh, back to uh, Corinthians. We've been reading in the book of Luke, and it's been quite helpful for me. You remember what the ministry is, right? Let us never forget this. What is the ministry? It's not a building, it's not an address, it's not a bunch of programs. The ministry by and large really isn't for us. I don't know if you've noticed that. The ministry that Jesus modeled is not to make me feel better about myself. It's not. What is the ministry? The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame or paralyzed or walking, the dead are raising, oh, and we're recognizing when the demonic is present. Please understand that the demonic knows humans way better than you will ever understand the demonic. How many generations have they had to practice on humans? You get one lifestyle, they've seen billions. They're crafty. There's no way that we're going to spot them within my own thinking or in my life or my situation. When I'm trying hard to maybe work out a whatever, and I don't know why it's not working. I read all the books. It could be demonic. Not saying it is, but what if it was? Jesus knew the difference. Did this man sin, the paralyzed man, or did his father and mother sin? Or is it a demon? Jesus, none of the above. God allowed this man to be this way because, watch this. The Apostle Paul, someone following around. Listen to these guys. They know what they're talking about. They have the words of eternal God. Paul turns around and speaks out a demon. Come out of her in Jesus' name. Ping and out of came. How do you know which is which? You got to do what Jesus did. He got up every day. And started every day in solitude and silence with the word of God. Most, most churches today, you guys know this, they don't really have much Bible. They don't teach verse by verse. Therefore, the connections in most churches are social. They're made through community, experience, inclusion, and of course, programs. Therefore, success is often measured by the people who attend there. Is this a good church? Well, I don't know. Let's check it out. How big is it? X, Y, Z. Cool. Growing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. How's the facilities? Pretty awesome. 
How are the programs? Oh, that's awesome. They, they got a program for everything you need. What about their impact in community? Oh, they're doing um, halfway houses and all that kind of stuff. They're a good church. Don't forget that the Laodicean church was full of works. They thought they were rich. Jesus says, you have no idea. You're wretched and poor and naked. Oh, and by the way, I'm on the outside. I'm knocking on the door to come in. They don't even know that I'm not present. This is where we're in. This is the Laodicean church. And I think to my first point that I brought up earlier, I think a function of the Laodicean church is the saturation of the Christians saturated by the world. I know, when I, I know what I want in a good restaurant. I know what I want when I want service and crystal clean water and the flatware better not have any spots on it. I know what I want in a good hotel or an airline. I know what I want as a consumer. And boy, the, they'd better come through. And that whole mentality of consumerism, I don't have to tell you, is in me. And I can bring that into the church. What's the ministry? The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the dead rise, the demonic is recognized and taken out. And the gospel is preached to the church congregation. Where's the gospel preached? To the poor. Do you notice that all of those ministry expressions have little to do with small groups, women's ministries, men's ministry, youth ministries? Or is it just me? It's you before your day begins. Get into God's word in solitude and silence. His voice may be pointed at you. You know you got a grudge. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Yeah, you kind of do. No, I don't. Look at your heartbeat. What about my heartbeat? Boom, boom. Why's your blood pressure going up when you think about that person? Wow. Did you know that a root of bitterness spoils and defiles many? It does. In solitude and silence. Yeah, blind eyes, Lord. Yeah. Let me see some blind eyed people. I'll open them up for them. God says, You have blind eyes. What do you mean? I don't have to tell you, your wife already did. I don't have to tell you because I spoke through your husband. You're covering and you're not listening. Do you need a program for that harvest? This is the ministry of Jesus Christ. That the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the dead are raised, stuff that's dead you would swear is never ever going to breathe again. And now look at it, there's life abounding. The demonic is recognized through fasting and prayer. Remember, sometimes this one only comes out with fasting and prayer. And the gospel is preached who? To the person cutting your hair. To the nurse I spoke to today. Prayed with the brother and then the security guard in the hallway overheard. What were you talking about? And the gospel was shared. Not because I'm so cool, because I'm not. I'm just saying, that's the ministry. That's the ministry. And I believe we're not going to get that if our head is plugged in in this 2021, if we're plugged in too often to screens. Chapter 7, verse 1. Uh, this actual section continues. It really should have ended after verse 1. Therefore, what do you mean? Having these promises, will the two above come out from among them, and I will be a father to you. Beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from how much filthiness? Oh. And I'm telling you, I am as guilty as anyone watching 
If it's PG-13, you know, maybe there's the odd R-rated show, you know, because after all, that's where my action star really shines. Beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all unfaithfulness of the flesh. That's your outward actions. Or the spirit, notice little s, this is your own mind and emotions, that's your inward thinking. Perfecting holiness, that's the word that means to complete, to be well-rounded, to finish. Perfecting holiness in the fear of our God. There's only one way harvest we're going to see. Let me rephrase. Lord, we don't know what you have for us in 2020. I think there are plenty of Christians wearing the name badge who are going to say a number of stupid things in this next year. How many of you want to hear and be God's truth for whatever's coming down the road? Um, Mark your margin here, Isaiah 50, verses 4 and 5, and then go ahead and turn there. Isaiah 50, and we'll end here. Isaiah 50, verses 4 and 5. Isaiah chapter 50. Um, we hope to teach, uh, do you know we have only 12 more chapters left in Jeremiah? Can you believe that? And Lord willing, either we'll keep cruising right into Lamentations, but I'm, I'm anxious to get started with the book of Isaiah. Been wanting to teach it for decades. And uh, anyway, when we get there, you're going to find the hundreds, really over a thousand references directly to Jesus Christ. Here's one. You Ready? This is chapter 50, look at verse 4. The Lord God, what is capital L, capital O-R-N-D, Jehovah, has given me, many of your translations have the M capitalized, because the translators know that this is speaking of Messiah. You can write Jesus right there and you would be accurate. The Lord God has given Jesus the tongue of the learned, that I, Messiah, should know how to speak. You know how many times they pre-planned the best that the human intellect could come up with, pre-planned the perfect trap for Jesus. No matter how much they plotted and planned and thought ahead, Jesus would just say something and everybody would drop their rocks. How did he know how to do that? Right here. The Lord God has given Jesus the tongue of the learned, that Jesus would know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He, God, awakens me, Messiah, morning by morning. That you can write uh, Mark 4, verse 35. Jesus, remember when he was rolling through Galilee? He picked his disciples, and then Peter said, why don't you come to my house? He healed Peter's mom. The Bible says he rebuked the fever. I wonder if there was the demonic involved in that. Could have been. He rebuked the fever. She served them. They ate dinner. Do you remember what happened after supper? How much of Capernaum showed up to the doorstep? All of them. And he healed them and cast out demons. Parenthetically, I'm becoming more sensitive to the fact that Jesus, no matter where he went, was often casting out demons. Same with Paul and Peter and John. If that sort of demonic pervasiveness was within the society then, do you think it's largely different today? I don't know. My hunch is, the demonic is more influential in my life than I'm probably aware of. How do I bust them? Right here. Right here. Get up before your day starts. I don't know what 2020 has in store for us, but I hope we're all going to take a page out of Isaiah. Why was Jesus so powerful in ministry? Remember, he said, I'm not doing this of my own. I only do the will of the Father. He's a model for us. How could he walk on water and raise the sick like he did? Well, because he's Jesus. That's what Jesus does. Remember what he said. Mm -mm. I'm a model. 
I left my star making tool belt in heaven. Watch what I do and how I live my life and then greater things will you do because I'm not here and you're doing it. How many of you have read that and went, yeah. Why aren't there dead people rising? There are the odd stories and the smatterings of uh, supernatural healings, and you may have heard of one. We at Harvest, we've actually seen some, point blank. But why aren't there more? I don't know. I don't have the ready answer. But I think it has something to do with this. He awakens me, Jesus, morning by morning. Jesus could have slept in that day. He ministered to how many of the people there in Capernaum? All of them. How long would that take after supper? What time do you think he turned in that night? If anybody needed to sleep in, it was Jesus. What did he do in Mark 4, verse 35? He arose a great while before the sun. Here, prophesied, 700 B.C., he, the Father, awakens me, the Messiah, morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. Aren't I supposed to know the ins and outs of the RNA vaccine, you know? You know, I don't know. Maybe. May the Lord lead us to know what we are to know and to trust him with the rest. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. It may be a Fauci learned. Maybe not. Verse 5, the Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. And then it goes on, I gave my back. And because of that, this is the prophecy of Jesus at the crucifixion. One more time. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak. 2021, I feel, is going to be a whopper. May we not be a part of forwarding the fantastic articles that come flittering through your Facebook pages. And there are plenty. Harvest, do our homework, I suppose, to a degree. But by and large, I was asked the other day, do you believe that black lives matter? Now, if I say yes, then aha, if you know anything about that, well, then I'm going to get attacked by this group. My brother came up with this. I think I have a better response. What's that? I believe that eternal lives matter. I said, I'm going to steal that. All the political stuff and people reading what they're reading and everybody getting worked up and conspiracy theories abounding. Notice the fruit thereof. Anxiety, fear, and it's even moving into, what would be the term? Um, oh, what's the term when, uh, um, I don't believe that, uh, I don't believe that, uh, everybody's after me. Paranoia. I wonder why I couldn't come up with that word. It's even getting into paranoia. The guy who ignited the bomb in Nashville, Tennessee, we're finding out he was, he was well down the conspiracy road. He did what he did. Harvest love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, meekness, faithfulness, self-control. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Don't be yoked together with a non-believer. May God give you, may God give me the wisdom of when to shut off all of the screens and get up before my day begins and get in solitude and silence that the Lord may give me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak. For your consideration in 2021. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Father, there are times when I'm putting together a bit of a study that I'm pretty convinced this is for nobody else but me. This was one of those studies, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, for all that we are blessed with. Can you take a quick minute? If you've noticed at any time your anxiety level ratcheting up, your blood pressure pounding in your temples, if you've noticed in any way a sense of anxiety and even a fear, a mounting fear, would you remember our study tonight? Maybe it's because you've not been meditating on whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is trustworthy, whatsoever is of a good report. Lord, I pray that we at Harvest are more consumed, Lord, with learning your Bible, that eternal lives really do matter, and that however much time you have left for us here on planet Earth, may you find this cracked pot, this vessel, doing his very and level best, Lord, to be filled with your spirit, to be a worshiper of spirit and truth, and to keep my eyes focused outward from 350 South Rock Boulevard and be sensitive to who I might be passing on the sidewalk, who I might be brushing past at the deli. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, May I have the sensitivity that when you speak, so will I. That I too can pray, whether it be uh, physiological, emotional, or spiritual, blind eyes opened, deaf ears hearing, those stuck and paralyzed words of life. That I, Lord, may be able to discern the demonic more so than I ever have before. One of their times I need to just keep moving because this particular person is so locked up in demonic oppression. They're actually planted there to waste my time. And Father, I pray when I close my day and pull the covers to my chin each night, Lord, may I be thankful for what you have given me. May I praise you and give you thanksgiving. And Lord, may I look back at the day and said, at least a time or two, either a prayer or a word, I spoke to some blind people. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. All right, next uh, Wednesday, we'll get back to Jeremiah. God bless you. We'll see you on Sunday, everyone.